Corey says I'm in a mood. And I am. Corey's in a mood. And it's really hard to pull her out of it. I've been singing all morning. <laughs> yeah, I'm in a mood. Sorry, my zippers are super sounds. I'm going to get in a bigger Wait. mood. <laughs> I'm in a mood. How could you be in a bigger one? You've been in a giant one. <laughs> so tell us what this podcast is about. This podcast is about tips or tags. No, no, no. The podcast is Oh. The podcast <laughs> is about... I'm in a bigger mood. Welcome to the Baking <laughs> Down Podcast. We are your twin hosts, Corey and Heather. We actually admin a group on Facebook called the Sugar Cookie Marketing Group, where we talk about trendy things... On topic things, nuggies, no house, <laughs> and moods. <laughs> this is a little bit of a moodier podcast, not just because of Heather, but because the topic at hand, it's very subjective, and you'll have opinions going one way or the other. At the end of the day, run your business into the ground however you want it to. I'm just kidding. You can run your business however you want it to. What we're just giving you tips is what we've seen work, what we see has not worked. And how social media has brought the stalker vibe to the internet. Did it ever leave? Did it ever? Did it ever it was harder back in the day. I want to tell you a story about my mom. Before oh. her and my dad got together, they'd broken up. But she wanted to see if he was dating someone else. So pre-social media, when you could just not look up on their Instagram and see where they were. Drive-bys. She did drive-by. behind, And they hid behind a bush. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, everyone should be thankful at social media now. <laughs> yeah, no one's getting arrested. So anyways, they got married, so it works. <laughs> We're here. <laughs> uh, but yeah, back to the topic at hand. I think a lot of people are like, well, those are just your opinions, They're... Heather and Corey. And at the end of the day, a little bit of it is, a lot of it is we've seen now four years into this, what happens when one opinion goes one way and one opinion yeah. goes the other way. And I can tell you based off of what I've seen work and what I've seen not work, the hard part is as a solopreneur, I love saying that. I word. can tell. Solopreneur. Framework. <laughs> Framework. Is you can get in this tunnel vision uh-huh. where whatever you tell yourself sounds kind of correct. Me and Heather are not saying like Absolutely. our tunnel vision is correct. We see an overview of about 46,000 bakers uh-huh. and what's something that they do that works or something they don't do that doesn't work. And that's what we're bringing to your ear holes today. Uh-huh. Yes. So uh, the title of today's podcast... Is actual words this time, not the mm, but it's tag versus tip. Tag versus now explain that. So, oftentimes, you guys are cookie artists painting in the medium of royal icing on the palette of dough, baked with love and attention to detail as the sun cascades across your kitchen and the birds fly about. Like, okay, that's very romantic. Uh What we don't see is like, that was a cookie, this is a business, and I sold it, right? Right. So oftentimes when we deliver this piece of gorgeous, stunning artwork, what we want is praise and adoration. And oftentimes the way we want that is by getting tagged because we're like, I gave you something. Now give me a little something, something back. Uh I scratch your back, you scratch mine. So we dive into these clients' lives. A lot of you guys are friends with your clients on Facebook because that's how your business started. No Uh problem with that. I'd rather pass away than do that myself. (laughs) And you're like, why did you post a picture of your birthday party and not tag the bigger so often in this group, we see people this this fight over I didn't get tagged, my business didn't get tagged, I didn't get publicly thanked, the cake baker did, the steak maker did, but the cookie person, I didn't get anything. I, I worked so hard yeah. and I got nothing. Should I reach out to them and ask them to tag me? I see a lot of animosity built up. A lot of moods. My people. Yeah. <laughs> See a lot of animosity built up over the fact that they didn't thank you. They didn't tag you. They didn't say, they didn't email you. They didn't leave you a review. They didn't do all this. But here's the big thing. The one thing they did do was the only thing that was required, which is the only thing that should matter. They paid you. They paid you. After that, that concludes the contract. Anything beyond that is icing on a cookie. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it even comes down to bakers upset when they don't get a reaction when they when the customer either, you even made a meme about it this week, when the customer picks up the cookies and they're like, thanks. And they didn't get this like falling to their knees. I'm naming my next child, Corey, cake baker miracle. <laughs> it's, but that's not what you're in business for. In business, your thank you, your tag, your praise is the money that they gave you to bake the order. Which brings us to tip one on tag versus tip. The tip is your money is your motivation. Getting paid is the only goal. Yes, and every way you go about that, if it's a great customer experience, a really high quality product, amazing packaging, that money is the conclusion of the contract. That is all 
when they end, uh, it's so funny. I read a book, No More Mr. Nice Guy. I think it's actually written for men. It's a good read. But he says a lot of times we have covert contracts where yeah. we're like, hey, but you knew, you knew that I'd want this though. That's a covert contract. Your contract with this person is I'll bake cookies, you give me money. And it's not fair to hold someone to a covert contract. No. It's it one creates a lot of resentment. Yeah, because, because the person, like, the person's out there living their best life thinking <laughs> they, the contract is done yeah, with the money. Right? You're resentful because you had a covert contract made with them that, well, I'm friends with you on Facebook and I see that you tag all the, and I think I'm owed this and I, and I, and I, the only thing you're owed is that dollar bill. Yeah. And once you get it, you should be the happiest business owner in the world because that was your, that was the goal. That was the bottom line. The uh-huh. bottom line is the bottom line. Yeah. Yeah. And anything above that is the tip. If they give you a financial tip, if they tag you in a post, if they write you a review, all that is extra sauce. Mm-hmm. Not that you do not deserve that. No, I, we have a cousin, Corey, who's going to know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> he runs a little fly by night detailing company. Hey, it's not my monkey's, not my circus. He had a guy leave a car. It had been destroyed by children. And, you know, the cousin works on it for four or five hours. Does a phenomenal job. The car looked like it rolled off the showroom floor. And the guy pays the bill. He pays the invoice. Cousin comes in so frustrated saying, he did not tip me and I deserved a tip. And I said, cousin, Jason, I said, let me ask you, how much do you think you deserve that tip? I think I deserved $50. And I said, then raise your prices by $50. You don't deserve a tip. You undercharged and he thinks $50 would have made it the price that was fair to you. Uh I said, raise every price you have by 50 bucks and then never care about the tip. The tip is just an extra, hey, I'm really happy. Yeah. Yeah, the problem with people that are artist, artistic, is you do want that verbal flaunt, yeah. that verbal feels great approval. So what I do is I take a photo. A photo lasts so long. You post it to social media, and you get a bunch of people saying, "Oh my goodness, this is the best thing I've ever and seen." And if I if that doesn't fulfill me, I'll bring it on Saturdays and show my mom. And we all know we <laughs> stand in line. Oh wow, this is my eyes. Have been born again, being able to view upon this cookie photo. I think taken. what has really cured me of winning too much praise and honor is having a 14-year-old son mm-hmm. because nothing, and let me repeat, nothing I do is noteworthy to him. <laughs> Corey, though, sometimes you're like, dude, you're trying to you're trying to get the love of your small child <laughs> south. Like you're trying to get young Corey Jr. <laughs> and it's Archer. They're two different people. <laughs> Uh, st- tip two, stop stalking. Uh, those of you who do friend your clients, I'm not saying that's a bad idea at all. I'm sure it's a great lead source, but it puts you in a different avenue from those of us who don't Yeah. because you can see, well, they didn't tell anybody. Well, they didn't tag me. Well, they tagged other people yeah. and that resentment builds. And then you're almost turned into my crazy mom in a bush uh-huh. and you are the crazy cookie lady in a bush on social media saying, why isn't I, why not? Should, should I reach out? Should then, I send this message? Then these becomes these really passive aggressive things. And yeah. I think it actually destroys your lead I source know. because again, all we want is somebody that buys from us consistently, but you come in and you're like, it was so nice. It was so nice to bake for you at my company. I know. I'm like, that's really aggressive. And they're picking up on that. Their post is not a place for you to advertise my yeah. friends. I would feel if I'm trying to say, like, here's a party I threw for my grandmother. I'm so happy with how everything turned out. And one of the suppliers, one of the vendors comes in and said, I supplied this thing. I'd be like, that's not what the point of my post was, especially, not to lead yeah, Jen. Especially if it's like, and we found out we're having a baby girl. It was so nice to make for your baby, baby girl. <laughs> that was not the, the point of I'm the, the baby post. girl who baked those baby girl cookies. <laughs> but you see, now you've created this weird thing. And you're like, no, it's fine. I just, they didn't say anything bad. They mm-hmm. just like my comment. You don't know what it's doing behind the scenes. If I knew my vendor was stalking me, man, I'm, gonna, nah, I'm not going to feel safe posting. All right? And then, yeah, but I think we're like, well, I deserve it. Well, they tagged other people. The, the only thing you deserved was the money that you got. Uh-huh. Beyond that, you stalking them. Had you never seen that post, would you have cared? No, you wouldn't have known? Then stop looking for those posts. Listen, ignorance is bliss. Yeah, preach. I, my hand is so hot on the block button. Yeah. You don't even have to block them. You can just turn off the no- Corey turns off notifications for people all the time. All the time. You're too happy? Ignore <laughs> I was like, hey, like, I'm not sure this person's related. My cousin-in-law? My third cousin-in-law? I don't think you're related to her at I all. would like to think about She's my cousin of marriage. Yeah. So anyways, they're not related, but she put this, she posts kind of like a lot of en- uh, energy, kind of a negative energy. <laughs> and Corey's like, yeah, it's kind of killing my vibe. So I just turned off the ability for her to show up in my newsfeed. Uh-huh. Not maliciously. Just as, So again, take that concept. Like, if it bothers you, stop looking at yeah. it. Yeah. It is addicting to get that cortisol spike and say, oh, how dare they, and let it fuel and... Uh, it's called rumination. It actually is a mental 
health destroyer uh-huh. to ruminate and let things go over and over and over. And then you're like, well, that felt really good. Give my brain something to do. Let me go look it again. Ugh, they didn't yeah. tag me again. What's crazy beyond crazy? This is Rihanna, singer, pop star. I know what she's She has so many people who sing her praises. Rihanna. I'm not a good singer. Singing her praises. Singing her praises. But one person did not sing her praises, and she ca- she made a whole video for that one person. I've read about this. Yeah. It is the cognitive dissonance of knowing that you are this good person and someone telling you, of all the millions of people who say you're amazing, uh-huh. you're awesome, one person who says doesn't, it creates such a dissonance in the brain that it becomes all the only thing that the brain can yeah. think about is why does this one person – Disregarding that, an, of yes. the largest majority of people think you're amazing. This one person throws you off completely. I know. Back to the baker. You know you're a great cookie. You know you're so good. In fact, people work, earn money, and give you that money. They give you their life in time that's been paid yeah. for to bake for them. But it's still not good enough because you think you deserve a little bit more. If that comes down to just raising your prices, like at what payment, uh-huh. at what dollar amount do you stop caring if you get tagged? Yeah. And whatever that is, get up there. Get uh-huh. your skills up there. Get your prices up there so that the thank you to you is you depositing something into your bank. Yeah. That's the biggest difference. And that's why it's so hard. Most of us have started our bakeries because it was a fun hobby. So we become hobby bakers. People want to buy it. Now we're a business. We didn't start this for a financial gain, but we're our mindsets are stuck back when it was a hobby thing, and you're and you were, were like, paid oh off of thank you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Corey initially got paid off of thank yous because she's like, well, I don't feel like I'm good enough to charge. I'm just doing this for fun. Right now, she's in the sourdough thank you era. We have to, we are in the honestly, we have to <laughs> all get down on our knees and say, this sourdough cookie is yes. the best thing I've ever had. And My- listen, I will pay you again yeah. with more sourdough. Oh. <laughs> you don't know it, but before people come, like before you get there, I'm like, hey, listen, prep, prep time. Yep. I need everyone to thank you for this. I need us to drool over it or are we going to get kicked off the list mm-hmm. and i'm not gonna let you guys take me down with you yep yes so <laughs> but that's because she's not taking money so you see that if she if as soon as money is exchanged it releases the praise lot and honor requirement yeah. okay so i know what you guys are thinking now well referrals are my lead source if i bake for somebody if they tell somebody that's how i grow my business i need them Okay, Corey brings up step number three, create review generating assets like business cards, Munbin thermal printers that send people, hey, and then uh, follow-up emails, which is a big one that we use. For every 20 follow-up emails we send that says, hey, please leave me a review, get one. Yeah. And that one is all the difference, right? Uh-huh. So it- the, the follow-up email isn't, hey, you owe me a review. The follow-up email is like, hey, if you had a good time, it would really mean a ton if you throw a review up on Google. Yeah. Kind of a passive thing because at the end of the day, we got their money. If they leave us a review, that's the kindness of their little, little hearts. And we are so thankful for that. It is not required. Nor yeah. are they punished for not doing it. Me and Heather went to the Cheesecake Factory a couple weeks ago. <laughs> it was a great experience. But then, like, we gave them all the lawn, like, praise. Extra big tip. But then we come back. Here's a QR code. Can you write me a review to He corporate? explained it. And he said, I hate that corporate does this. It, it, but it, it soured a little it bit of the experience. It soured a little bit of the experience. It was like, oh. It almost is like, wow, we were so nice to you. Now you're taking advantage yeah. of it. And then I'm like, well, now I don't want to come back here because he's just using us to – and he's like, at the end of the day, unfortunately, my entire pay structure is based off of how many of these I get. I would love to go to corporate companies and be like, whatever that is, stop it. <laughs> because everybody knows it's manufactured. Uh-huh. You know, if it's not five stars, it might as well be zero. Uh-huh. If you go to – car, I, was, I like to read about um, car salesmen yeah. on Reddit – and the guy was like, hey, I, I did everything right. And then the person gave me four. Uh, no, he said, I bought the car. They filled out the review, the five stars for me, but I didn't want to give them five stars. And the person was like, they know that you're one of those people who gets four stars because it's really hard to earn five. And if they don't get five stars, it might as well be zero. Yeah. So, yeah, so it means it's, not gonna, yeah. it's a social currency that exchanges oftentimes with, you know, they tagged you. This is, this is what gets me. They tagged you in a Facebook group. Right. And you're like, oh, thank you so much. Hey, it would really mean a lot to me if you also. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, wow, this is becoming exhausting. Right. Yeah. (laughs) So there's a social currency and you can use yours up real fast. What you need to do is be thankful at any corner. So what I started doing is because I do ask for reviews, but a lot of times clients are busy and Mm -hmm. they already sang my praises via email. I'll just copy their little blurb Mm -hmm. in the email, put it in a Canva template. It just says customer review. And I put whatever their order was as the background image. And that's what I use. You see, you still get juice out of it, even though they didn't publicly tag you. And even if someone never even sends that email, Uh they bought it, they didn't return it. That's your thank you. I think you got to, and the Corey and I will say, Corey and I will try to choose the metric 
by which we measure success. So when you don't know what the metric is, so for, for a baker, it would be how much money did you generate this month? If you're a business centric baker, right? And then you'd say, okay, how much money to generate? There is your metric of success. Uh-huh. Did you make more than this time last year? Did you make more than last month? Whatever that, um, whatever we call it, something you jump over horses, horse hoops. Okay. Whatever the horse soup is, <laughs> so make sure you head towards it. But what happens is when we, da- when we have an, an, an I'm going to say an egocentric metric, uh-huh. like how many people, how many p- people told me I'm the best, Yeah. then you're going to constantly feel like a failure and you're going to become resentful because that metric isn't business centric. That's egocentric. Another egocentric metric is how many likes and shares you get on social media. Very, and that so, is so exhausting. bad. In fact, you can hide it. It, exactly, because it will eat it. But then you have a great set. So then you're like, I have to do even better on my next set. No wonder people are burning out and quitting. <laughs> Raise your hand if you've hidden the count, the like count, but still counting it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that egocentric, and we are, you know, by humanity's definition, we're very egocentric creatures. It is derailing some of your guys' business models because you are – so thirsty for praise, law, tags, honor, whatever, that you're pestering your clients that were like, but I did everything I was supposed I to. The co- contract was I give you my money and I'm released. Yeah. But you're holding that. Well, you owe me this. You owe me that. No, 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 no. Either discount your price so much and then tell them they owe you that yeah. or let them go and raise your prices. Uh-huh. Uh, so number four, incentives for reviews. I find that this one's a little bit harder to make work, but you can see people that are very driven by incentive yeah. for reviews and you can say, hey, 20% off your next order. I'll throw in free cake pops or I'll throw in this if I can get a review from you. Kind of make it more personal. I find that when people are given something for reviews, they feel like they've been bought and they feel like that's a biased review. Yeah. Uh, things that you can do is like, hey, it just I find it works that if you email them, hey, Corey, thank you so much for ordering me. I hate to do this to you. Again, we're, we're creeping into yeah. that thing. If you really, really want those reviews, you can say, hey, hey, would you mind? It makes all the difference in the world if you did have a good experience to just let people know, here's a link to my Google review profile. Yeah. Also, I did get an email. Okay. I know people might say it was dumb. My signature is Ugo. So I did pay. I'm sure did you ever AI. figure it out? My C's are so hard to mm. do. Corey paid for a company on TikTok to come I'm up sure with a with signature. AI, they were like, Corey Miracle. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> did you practice it? I practiced it. It's still my C's are a little wonky. See, Corey, I'm sure if it was an H, it would be so much cooler. H, I have H's in there. Like, I horrendous. You, but I think they could make your school. C's <laughs> are, it's you, 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 you get it on the first try or it's ugly. <laughs> I'm going to be like, your, your entire name has a lot of circles in it. C, D, O, the And that's e. not cool. That's very uh, bubbly. 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 Okay, but I did get an email from them. Like, one, I already got my signature. And I'm not ever going to buy it again. Yeah. <laughs> but it said in this email, get a refund on your signature. And it was saying, if you leave us a review, you're entered to win a refund on your order. Enter to win? No, take that trash away from me. Hey, but that was to win. No, 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 no. If you, let, if you led with, do you want a refund? And then I'm entered to win? I, they can't did you do it? Everyone did you do it? I did not. Okay, so I, I think you did But it caught my eye. Caught <laughs> my eye. Why? Headed off to the delete button. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's said why well, I've said this on the podcast before. I worked for this company and they had such terrible reviews. This property restoration, you know, it's not going to be a good yeah. experience either. You're already on their ba- their worst day. You already, your house burnt down. You're not in a good place. <laughs> You're in a mood like other. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm in a house burning down mood. Anyways, they had such bad reviews. When, and I was in there, I was the entire marketing department. They said, hey, can we get unlisted from these review profiles? And I said, yeah, if that was a possibility, these major billion dollar companies would have your throat. Yeah. You can't be delisted from them unless you shut down. And they're like, well, what are we going to do? And I said, instead of hiding behind these bad reviews, we got to build up the good reviews. Yeah. Well, how are we going to do it? And initially we said, well, let's say we'll pay people $200 to do it. Nobody did it. They didn't want to feel like they were bought. So they were like, back to the drawing board, what else can we do? And I said, well, let's try this way. Let's pay the employees the $200 if they get the review. So the employee would go and say, hey, if you like this project, please, it means, again, it comes back to this, Uh I hate this setup, but what else can we do? Uh Until reviews and star ratings have less of an impact, this will always be how Uh it is. But the uh, employee said, hey, it would mean a ton to me. It actually is how my bonus is based off these reviews. If you wouldn't mind leaving a review here, that would be great. 
one lady figured it out. The, the, they ended up bumping up that payout to $500 a month for the entire year. She made an extra $500 a month. That's insane. It wasn't hard to do. Nobody else really took her up on it. Finally, they saw what she was doing. She just showed up with a new BMW M3 <laughs> convertible <laughs> <laughs> with a red interior. <laughs> and everyone was like, well, I want this too. And then the, it really turned around that company's review profiles yeah. because it took – so I, I'm anti-incentive for review. I'm more of that personal please help me ploy, uh -huh. the direct, direct communication. But again – at the end of the day, the money was the exchange. It was the exchange. Well, here's what I did in a local. This is I know what you're going to say. Group. What am I going to say? Give you free stuff, be taste tester if you like it. Leave <laughs> yeah. So she removed the monetary aspect of it. So the exchange was the review. It was the review. So what I did was I made a post. I said I've oh, I've made five things for five people that are willing to help me with my review profile, my Google business reviews. I think are you said. Tracking. You can leave an honest review. The thing is that we are very getting very close to I violation know. of terms of service. I said, hey, listen, if you love it, leave a review. If you don't love it, let me know. Be my little right. toaster. Basically, the thing is, like, the issue here is it violates these review profiles, terms of service, when you give somebody something in exchange for a five-star yeah. review. If you give them something in exchange for a review, you're back in the good graces of not violating these terms of service. Yeah. So... But then you risk. It's a bad review. <laughs> I got my car fixed. It was my tire was screeching the other day, so I had to take it in to get a break. The gentleman that takes care of me there, I love him. Erkin. That's how you say it. There's an Erkin. Do you have his number? I'm going to take mine. Friend. You're going to take it to there? I don't know why. You oh, love yeah, him. I you know. talk about them I like know, you love him. Yeah, you so like I got a, a text from him, a personal text. And he was like, hey, if you didn't have a good experience, let me know. I'm going to try to fix it right now. But if you did enjoy your experience, you might get a little survey yeah. if you wouldn't mind taking it. Like he was like, I want to take the issue offline. Smart. Yeah. Uh, there, That does not violate terms of service so much. In fact, there's a couple companies. If you ever get a like, please leave a survey, like an automated thing from a bigger company, kind of think your dentist office or yeah. something. And you go to leave the review and you click five star and it say and you and it looks like it's on their website. But as soon as you hit the five star, it says, would you mind cross posting this to Google? Click this button and we'll do it for you. Yeah. But on the flip side of those websites, if you do not put a five star and you put a three or less, it changes it from sending you to Google to sending you to their inbox because they want to address it there and help you out. Just like every app I've downloaded, it says, are you enjoying this app right now? Yes or no? And then if you say yes, please leave us a review. If, if you, you say, say no, no, the little thing just is <laughs> <Bye. laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> so you are allowed to get ahead of a problem before uh -huh. it comes to a review. Um, I personally don't like the incentive thing. I think it works when you remove the monetary aspect out of it. So what you can do is do a QR code printed by your mun bin, put it on the back of a cookie to make the whole process of leaving re a review a lot easier. I There's guarantee less people are like, I've never had someone leave a review for my money. No, but I'm just <laughs> giving you some ideas. Better than stalking them out It's a the numbers internet. game, man. It's a numbers game. Have all these avenues for people to easily leave a review and expect one out of 20, one out yeah. of 30. Uh -huh. You know, if you're not getting a ton of reviews, welcome. This is the hell we live in. I know. I think we've taught so hundreds of people in cooking classes. Hundreds and I think and hundreds. we have maybe 30 reviews oh my goodness divide that by two please no i have just recently checked oh, did. <laughs> didn't want to be sad and in the mood <laughs> so that's hardly anything that's hardly for a hundred yeah but you know what we do have their money we have their money what we do have is a lot of them coming back and that is a great idea as thank if you i think money's back, a great idea too <laughs> Money is a great idea. End of podcast. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> a great idea to really judge, like, if you're doing well is, do you have those repeat clients? Are you always having to constantly earn new business because your other ones don't You're probably like hiding in their money? bush and they're like, well, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> hiding from you. <laughs> uh, number five of this more cognitive type podcast is just be able to let it go. It's okay if you didn't get the tag. It's okay if you didn't get the review. You got the money. Uh -huh. That was the goal. If I see a review, I've trained myself to be more su pleasantly surprised. Yeah, it's a perk, not a not, not a requirement. A, yeah, that I'm like, oh my, oh my soul and body. Yeah, and then you write the nice review. So let's recap these one more time. So this is tag versus tip is the name of this podcast because we don't want covert contracts. The contract was, I will bake for you, you give me cookies, anything beyond that. If you wanted to be a part of your contract and you write it, if anybody wants to test this theory out, be like, I bake, you give me cookies and you're required to give me a review. You come back to me and you tell me the flames from which your business has fallen. <laughs> Put it in your little contract. Will I leave for every <laughs> You can see, because your reviews are so crazy, right? Because we want them so badly. We want the five star, but we don't want anything less than five star. I've seen these companies 
it was actually a remodeling company. I was reading the article about it. They had put in their contract, if you leave us a bad review, we will fine you or we will sue you. It was something we will find very- you and we will take the house down. <laughs> it was something very dramatic. Yeah. Or it was, I think it was a lawsuit. So somebody had left, it was uh, you know not happy with the thing, left them a bad review, and then they sued her. They sued her and said, you have to take down that or we'll sue you. And it was for something like for, uh, okay, imagine, this is back when Yelp was in its heyday. Yeah. The lady says to Yelp, like, I left, you, I left a review using your website and now I'm getting sued from it. So guess what Yelp did? Yelp said, we'll Ooh. pay for your lawyer. They, yeah, I think they actually deleted the entire company off the <gasps> profile until they rescinded oh, the they lawsuit. because technically. Because Yelp can't have you guys, yeah. can't have companies doing uh-huh. that. So it's pretty interesting how it all works. But anyways, back to this. Tag versus tip. One, your money was your motivation. That was it. Say that. Every time you feel like you're owed a review or a thank you or a tag, say money was my motivation. I got the money. I'm good. Sometimes if they pay, I'll let it sit in whatever place that they pay the money versus putting it in a bank account. Like, especially if they order so far in advance. Yeah. So you can have it there. So I don't feel like for free. when I'm finally baking, it's like for nothing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nothing's worse than spending the money you haven't earned yet. Yeah. Uh, number two, stop stalking. A lot of that. A lot of that, you're giving energy where no energy was required. You're ruminating. You're festering. You're get, You're bothering yourself yeah. because you're going to look at their party, their tags. The, again, this is a lot of people who are friends with their clients on Facebook. Or you see them like in a local community group. And that or... hurts more than your client tagging another baker. That'll, that'll humble you. <laughs> But then, but that's a great indicator. Something you're doing is not getting Uh these people to come back, reassess it. Stop yelling at everybody else and Uh yell at yourself. Uh You're already doing that, right? Number three, create review generating assets. This is a much better approach than thinking you're owed something. Ask for something. Like Corey said, it's a benefit, not a requirement. You're not owed it. You want it. Uh, Business cards. I know you got a business card with the QR code on the back. You can have that QR code send them to a review profile. I know Google uh, gives you a hyperlink directly to leave the review. Things like that. Um, Munbin is a thermal printer. You can get them on Amazon. There's a bunch of thermal printers. That one's just a common brand that actually I have myself. Uh, you can print thermal labels that say, Hey, if you like this, give me a review. It's very, I think the cost per sticker outside the ones that burns through when you're trying to figure it out is pennies on the dollar. Also, if you're like, no, I'm not trying to learn new technology on Etsy, the amount of review stickers you can buy. Yeah. Like what we do, leave us a review. You can stick that right on top of the bakery box. Very great idea. And Munbin, you don't have to figure it out, which has got a bit of a learning curve. Yeah. And then send up follow-up emails that say, hey, if you really like this, you know, I'd love to hear from you. It would mean the world. Corey says, incentives for reviews, I do like her approach where she does give away free product in exchange for helping me with feedback. If you don't like it, let me know. If you do like it, it'd be awesome if. Again, no requirement. You're not owed anything. And I'll find that Corey, while it does bother her, a lot of people who do get those free products never hear they back. Don't. They, they never don't. hear from them. And that, that's, the, that's the percentage. I get them is how you keep them. Quick and easy. <laughs> Quick and easy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. God, as fast as I can. Uh, so you can do incentive for reviews or you can do that. You know, it really helps me, much like the Cheesecake Factory guy. We'll never be going back, but he got a good review. Yeah, he, he got did. What he, he got – he squeezed the juice out of us. He'll never know that he lost us now as – Customers, because we'll avoid them. But does he care? His, unfortunately, his uh, metric for success, as said by Cheesecake Factory, is these reviews. Or could it be the tip? That I you don't get know. Our easy orders where we order two of the same He was thing. extremely nice. I he almost feel bad. I, I feel bad that they become prey to the system and not which by they designed. Yeah, that really right. is. Um, I did have a customer one time came up. She took the cookies, said thank you. Very curt. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Then I got an email a little bit later. She's like, I'm so sorry. I'm such an introverted person mm-hmm. that I wasn't even comfortable getting out of my car, let alone talking. But thank you so much for the cookie. So you have to realize yeah. there's so many different types of people out there that a thank you or a, oh my goodness, mm-hmm. I can't believe your hands touched a piping bag and created these are the same value. If they're not taking a million Oh my God, with a million exclamation points, yeah. it's still they still value what you make. The money. We gave you money. Yeah. As much as we appreciate, like I had a customer show up yesterday and she was dancing because I, one, made her free sourdough. She was singing to her the Rihanna song? Yeah. <laughs> Rihanna. She was so funny, but she had ordered these cookies and I made her a sourdough and she did this whole dance in my- Is this the Bryson's mom? No. Oh, she, she did send me a picture for vibes. eating the cookies. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So you have people that are like, oh my goodness, I can't believe you. And then you have people who are like, sweet, short, to the point, thank you. Right. They At the end of the, the day, thing. their money spends. Yeah. The, the extrovert's money spends, the introvert's money spends. I like to think of money as exchange of somebody's lifeblood energy. Yeah. 
Yeah, like that's, you, it took you two hours. Yeah, you went and sold your soul, your uh-huh. time in exchange for money, and you turned around and I sold my soul for your money. And we're all happy. Like, you gave me we part of your no life. Souls. None of our souls. Our souls are on <laughs> Bible. So, like, I always like to think, like, wow, you took some of your entire life and gave it to me. Yeah. That was great. If you anything beyond that. Number five, let it go. Just let it go. Let go. Find you. Go let treat go, yourself. Let go. If you find that you feel like you're so much owed this praise and honor and you can't let it go and you have your reasons why and you cut them a deal and you gave and you squeezed them in, take their money and go treat yourself. Go treat yourself. yourself. Nobody likes you more than you're going to like you. So show you a good time. Uh Show you a good time on their dime. Yeah. And then enjoy it and let them go. Let it go. Or be like me. Block it out. Corey, rest in peace, your cousin, my marriage. (laughs) If you don't know it, can't hurt you. (laughs) (laughs) If they can't show it, you won't know it. (laughs) So that is this one. All right. Now on the flip side, for those people I've seen a because we are able to see in the groups and stuff. I see a lot of people lose a lot trying to pursue these tags and stuff. They drive away clients. They create bad reviews, actually, because yeah. people feel that they're pestered. And it costs them a lot more than they get. So I'm going to say from a business aspect, even if this sounds kind of funny and you know superficial and mm-hmm. subjective, objectively, don't, cha- don't chase these tags. Just don't do it. Sometimes it's not going to benefit I you. I was talking to Heather and the – when you feel that sense of like desperation, like I wasn't tagged in this post mm-hmm. or whatever, it's it could be because you have um, made your little siphon of uh, referrals from one aspect out of all these ones. So you might be saying, I only get leads through Facebook in community groups because one, you don't have a Facebook page. Mm. You never set up your Google business profile. Mm. You don't have an account on next door. You're too dependent on them. You're so dependent on this one avenue that it you're feels not like people are robbing you when they don't tag you. And that's a fair feeling. Your feeling is valid. Uh, you can address it two different ways. You can force people to review you. They're, you're not going to get great results or you can diversify your lead source. And I think diversifying your lead source so you're not dependent on one, especially like Facebook went down for eight hours one time that... That would have been eight hours your business was at a standstill. If Yeah, if you're, that's why, and every time face, I almost feel like Facebook goes down. He's like, twins, you got this? Yeah, we got it. <laughs> oh, God, I got Thank it. you for the podcast topic this <laughs> week. Um, when Facebook does go down, it really shines a light that people are like, oh my goodness, my entire business. Of course, a couple of days later, we forget that we had all these yeah. best laid intentions of mice and men to make the newsletter, to make a website, to do this stuff. Yeah. Same here. If you're so dependent, if, if not getting that tag, is ruining your day. You haven't diversified your lead sources enough. You ha- you haven't. You're too narrow minded. You got to broaden that and make it not as impactful. Yeah. And if you're just starting out and you're like, well, I I'm, I don't have any leads coming in to diversify. Here's what I did before I had consistent leads coming in. I baked popular sets and ate them myself. <laughs> but what I did was, I was got right here. Content. I was right. My mouth you was right into your <laughs> uh, But what I did was create content in my downtime. And you don't have to create 24 of the set. If you want to make one bluey cookie to show that you can do a bluey face on a cookie. We run this community group, this hell on earth community group. <sighs> And I, I think it's pretty interesting because because I see so many of these posts going up by these people who sell products, you can kind of see which ones under get it and which ones yeah. don't. The ones who don't just barely add any value, post a link on sale Saturday and then disappear into the night. The ones who do get it, instead of even selling themselves, I can tell that they tell their client, if you liked what I did, uh-huh. it would mean a lot if you posted it in that group. In this specific Name the group group. <laughs> yeah. And I know it's the cleaning lady. The cleaning yes. lady, she'll go, she'll get a lead source from this group. Yes. I'm going to hire her and see exactly how I, she's this must is going be amazing Because everyone seems yeah. to like her. <laughs> this lady, she doesn't sell her services. I've never seen her make a I post, know. but everyone says, hey, I've hired this lady. She was recommended to me by this group and I had such a great experience. I think she really gets it. That hurt. I know. I, I don't even live in the area where the group is. I know exactly what her name is. Like, yeah. I can refer to other people and I've never hired her. Or is she just so stupid? I don't know. You don't know. She's probably you're both. like, I have got to tell She's got to be both. A little bit of both. She's got to be a little bit of both. Yeah. You can't be great because there's too many people in the world. Like, you got to be pretty good. <laughs> if you're amazing, then you're not going to have any room for good clients. Yeah. Uh, anyways, that's that. So at the end of the day, stop with the tag stuff. Stop searching. Stop stalking. It's, you gave it to them. Stop looking them up. Yeah. Don't do the forest through the trees. Yeah. You did so good up here until the last second. Then you turned the you cheesecake factory the experience yeah. and you said. My one thing I do often is I try to leave Etsy reviews with photos. Because very nice those. Carrying the team there. One thing I hate about Etsy 
is like people are leaving reviews for products that I'm not looking at, but I'm getting the review on like the shop, but I want to know about that product. If you do a group, like you ordered a bunch of things from that, uh. it'll be like, just leave a review and it can get yeah, confusing. Yeah, oh, that's there. what's yeah. happening. I was like, this is kind of weird because yeah. it's not what I wanted. So I'll leave a review. Like I bought this stuff out of my hard-earned life money. Life plug. Yeah, my life time. I spent my life on yeah. this. And I'll leave them a review. Well written. Everything I'd want to know when I ordered. They don't write you back. No, what they do is I'll get a DM. Oh. Can you post this somewhere on oh, social media? You're not going to like that. I know you. I'm going to be like, I'm going to delete what I did. Yeah. Because that was my thank you. I yeah. won. You went only- above and beyond the terms of the agreement of paying money to get a product. You you gave them a review and now they want more Yeah, well, I'm like, well, then give me something back, I know. man. I know. Yeah. It's it's a rough one out there. But again, at the end of the day, find the metric that actually means something and that's going to be your your bottom line. Yeah. If you're listening to this podcast, you know that we lead with the business focus first. If you want an ego trip, this is not the podcast for you. Uh You're going to want to stalk people. You're going to want to force them to tag you. That's Mm going to be your payment. But for the rest of us who will take those leads who no longer order from you, we say money is the the method of what well, the metric. Evil. Yep. Mm-hmm. I did post in the Facebook group that nobody had texted in, and now we have so many. Oh, how many? I'm not telling you because you can say I can't read them. You can read too. <laughs> <We> have <laughs> someone said good morning, miracle, and thank you everyone who just texted. Thank in. you guys. That is so fun. I said please don't make me talk. Heather to was for in an a hour. mood because there was nothing in the inbox. I was in a mood because Ruth Ann. Muted her phone, no, then continue. told me. We've already gone through it. Good morning, Miracle Twins. I have been on and off baking for the last six years, and in the most recent few, mostly last year, I've taken more of a leap into it. I have a few questions. One of my biggest hurdles is I, I have is staying organized with the business aspect, documenting money in and out. One, do you have any recommendations on how to get organized so I'm not running aimlessly around when tax season comes next year? Two, do you have recommendations on how to look for a good small business CPA? Three, within my state, charging tax is confusing. Food tax is 2% without cutlery provided. Then it's 7.25. All bakers are all over the place with what they charge. I currently only do customs, but like to venture into markets and pop-ups. Should I go straight with the 7.25% on every order and keep it streamlined or change it based on the order venue? Phew, I know that was a lot. Thank you for the help you're able to offer. Thank you for providing the cookie college. I would be completely lost without it. And the success I've seen in under a year is amazing. I wouldn't be anywhere I am today without the miracle that is both of you. Aww. Okay, your questions stacked together, and you're going to hate the answer. It's finding the good CPA. It is finding. But, okay. Our CPA. I've known her for one. She is too good. Not good. She's so good. Listen, she doesn't she, need a dog. <laughs> I found my CPA years and years ago by seeing how she ran a networking you met group. Her, yeah, she was a networking group president or something? She was. Yeah. And I met with her a few times, and she's very, very by the book. But it was kind of like, if you go to these networking groups, it's a great way to see how these people act, to see if you jive with them and if they're vibing. She is a lot older than us. Um, she doesn't even have a Facebook page for her business. So this is just to show you. Oh. But she is... She was a CEO for two companies at one point in her life. I love her. She, the lady doesn't write back to my emails. She gets the taxes filed. I just don't know when they're getting filed. Listen, when, it ha- when, when Annette calls Heather, <laughs> it's almost like Heather reverts back to a small this child because I'm scared. Small child. And then if Annette's like, you did good, Heather. Heather, really? Please. Thank you, Mom. I mean, Annette. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really coming down to finding the right CPA. And your right CPA are going to answer those other two things Here's for you. Here's what I'm going to tell you to do. Go to a community group. Tell people, hey, I own a small bakery business. I'm wondering if anybody has any leads to a CPA. What you're going to get is a bunch of tags, which is awesome. You got to date these people. You got to date these people until you decide you get money married to them because uh-huh. the CPA is going to be in a lot of this stuff, but it's going to answer your questions on which tax rate to charge. It's going to answer your questions on how to document. Our CPA put it up on her QuickBooks account. I don't know. We pay for it, but we're under her and she goes in and she handles tagging and category and taxes, right? Yeah. Does cost money. Would absolutely pay it every year because I hate doing this. Uh-huh. So that's what I recommend. One, tell people, hey, I own a small bakery business. I'm looking for CPA. Here's my needs. I need somebody who kind of communicates pretty good. Uh, I'd like to meet him in person one time because otherwise you might get recommendations yeah. for like remote people and I, then start going through and meeting these people. And when you meet these people, ask them, have you worked with a bakery before? Can you show me? the? Ba- you'll know if they like. Yeah, you'll know if they understand yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And some people are like, hey, I don't know, but I know I can figure it out yeah. and I'll get that to you. So that's what you're going to want to do. And then it's going to answer your question too. That's how you find that CPA. And it's going to answer your question one. 
to track that. Now, uh, RCPA has this in QuickBooks, but if you're interested, you need a budget as an app that you can use to track money and also set goals. I use it for my personal life, really changed my life around. Uh, there's a Facebook Live on that app. But if you really, really, really want to know where your money comes and goes and how you're using it, I would highly recommend that app. I will also say like a game changer thing that Annette told us to do was to create a bank account and only use the debit card when it's associated to the business. It makes it so much easier to decipher. Keep like with like. Yeah. So we open like, um, so everyone always asks, how do you file the LLC? I don't know. And that made me do it myself. And if I can do it, you can do it. It was like 50 bucks. You file it with the state, immediately spits back an EIN number. With that EIN number, you can open a bank account with Navy. We use Navy Federal because yeah. I had an account there. Super simple. Navy Federal, it just you a debit, debit card, and now you've kept like with like. Yeah, but it's then easy to track your expenses because you're not mm. having to go and through, what was that for? Did yeah. I, what this was mine. And was that not mine? Was that a me thing or was that a yeah. business thing? And then if you buy things, one time my uh, my credit card was stolen and someone went on a dress, like prom dress. Yeah, and Annette calls us and, well, I guess you guys paid for Corey's wedding outside of the business budget. And we said, no, ma'am. <laughs> and that's what a CPA will do is go through. And things that maybe you are kind of riding the line on, they'll bring it up and then they'll show. One a benefit of the CPA is she was like, measure your, if I was paying rent. She's like, measure the office space. We can do that as a tax rate. I don't know. They know more than I yeah. do. But yeah, it's worth it. I highly suggest it. I highly suggest getting started with the CPA. I hate spending money myself. That's one of the areas where I would spend money. To me, that's like a good foundation to have. Mm-hmm. It, nothing's worse than filing and then get in mm-hmm. two years when the IRS catches up. Owing. I'll find you. A man, yeah, Mr. I'll Uncle Sam. Uncle They're Sam in the bushes. Stalking Heather. He <laughs> said, I will get you. I get her. Uh, if you're still in need of text, what are you currently binging? Oh, what am I? I'm rewatching. CSI Las Vegas. Wow. Way back in time there. I think that came out when I was 15. I know. 2012. Not bad, though. What is it? Grissom? Grissom has already left this. <gasps> yeah. Oh, I hated it he left, left halfway through. Yeah, I know. No, it's been a whole... The only guy who plays the whole thing is that kind of good-looking white guy. Oh, I can't remember thank his Thank you name. so much for those so incredible sorry. details. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching... Suicidal came back. <laughs> she married Grissom. <laughs> I was watching this... Reality, not reality. I don't know when it's real people, but you're just watching them being recorded. It was called Couples Therapy. Yeah, I really like it. You can watch it on a Paramount Plus. Paramount. Yeah, and the new season comes out on May 31st. But you're just watching these people go to Couples Therapy. Absolutely love them. You watch it twice. My favorite show, mm. Terminalist. Terminalist. Terminal list. List. Okay, that it? was edge of your seat. Was it on? Do you pay for a streaming service or do you 100% mooch? Currently 100% mooch. Wow. Yeah. You're going to pay for the uh, YouTube thing? Yeah. Okay. If yeah. you don't pay, I, I don't really find watch YouTube you in and a I bush. wonder if it's because I oh, can't yeah. watch full episodes of stuff. I'll say, okay, people, I hate subscriptions. I have a couple of them, but I think I vetted them. And one of them, and I hate to say it, is YouTube, not YouTube TV, YouTube. I just pay for YouTube and it removes all the ads. But can Things I watch also, full episodes of stuff? You just gotta find a channel that has full episodes. Like it's not changing with this content on so, YouTube. So let me just say, I loved watching Courting Barry the Live. Okay. It says you cannot watch it anywhere where there's a full episode. Like YouTube is be like, Subscribe here to watch a full episode. Can I watch it when that happens? Does the YouTube channel have the full episode on it right now? I don't know. I can't see it. I just subscribe. no. Then there is also subscription. Like there's paid uh, memberships on YouTube. No, so you just like forty eight hours. It says yeah. forty eight hours parentheses full episode. But if I did not pay for YouTube, I would have watched ads probably twenty ads per episode. Now I watch it with no ads. Yeah, I don't know. A couple things. What if you t- you can pay for something? If with your money and your tips from your staff. <laughs> Here's things that YouTube allows you to do. You can download a video to watch offline. So like if you were... No, yeah, no, traveling or something. You can fast forward. If you double tap, it goes forward like 10 or 30 seconds. You can long press the right and it makes them talk like at a higher speed yeah. to get through the ads. Like when people do sponsored yeah. stuff. There's some other stuff with that. Oh, you can add cues. Oh, and you can let YouTube play when you turn your phone screen off. So oh, I can still so listen to like it. A, Nate watches... Nate is in his cruiser. He just turns it on. Well, he should sign up then. Boot you. Yeah, he should sign up. Try to see him again. It'll be 50 bucks for the year. 50 for the year? The more, if I can get five of us in here. I don't like your attitude. You're not a good person to spread Listen, some wealth with. You moody, mooder I'm a mooder, McMooderton. <laughs> moody, McMoody. I have a marketing question. It's a repeat and I need to repeat it. Let's talk about reduced marketing plan, both social media and email for when you're not actively selling your items. 
And your time is taken by whatever is causing you to take a break. For example, I'm traveling today with my family due to the death of an uncle. It was totally unexpected and really caused me to interrupt my plans, but I would be there no matter what. So what's a quick and easy way to do both without going full gray? Hashtag, do you miss me? Hashtag, because I miss you. Hashtag, whoever this is, it's hilarious. But I can't see who you are, but I love it. So so back to the original question is, I it's, think it's like, hey, you're not Things selling. Things life happen. Life happens. You're going to have to hit pause on it. But how can you be there without being there? I always like my base content bucket plan. So you can post. I would probably reduce the consistency at which I'm posting if yeah. I'm not actively selling. So if you're doing, let's say you're doing five days a week in various mediums, a story here, a and then here, alive there, so whatever it is. I would reduce that maybe to twice per week. I would keep them feed-only posts. Uh-huh. So we're barely showing up in that algorithm. Feed posts are the hardest to reach your audience. And I would not, you're just going to remove all call to actions. Mm-hmm. You're not going to push anyone to clicking any button. You're not going to make it easy to order. All the things we say to make it easy to order, make it out of order. And then the next thing, you need to download the Business Suite app. Very much. I don't care what anyone says. If you're like, I ran out of time, I couldn't post. Mm. You have spent some amount of time perusing uh-huh. the internet. Uh-huh. I just know that people have their phones. You know, it's never too far away. So the time that you were sitting doing something, chit-chatting, you mm. could just throw up a post real quick. Mm-hmm. The Business Suite app makes it super easy and you can schedule it out. So say if you know you have 10 minutes on Monday where you're driving somewhere mm-hmm. to your event or something, you can schedule two posts for that week. Mm-hmm. Bada-bing, bada-boom, you're done. You're done. Who do you think sent that text? Because the next text is who it was. I have no idea. Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> this is Timmy, by the way. Um, my question was to the group, and this is the last one I'll read. Thank you so much. I'll read all these next ones next time. It's uh, I said, what were you eating for breakfast? And the phone number 423 said sausage, gravy, and biscuits. <laughs> oh, that's That sounds so You know good. what I made for breakfast? Okay, tell them. Get your, get your active sourdough. Cinnamon buns. It was delicious. It was delectable. A little tart. Like, if you didn't expect it, I think people would be like, whoa, what was that? So I think... The, the tartness comes with the bulk proofing, the bulk fermentation. I Can I get a crumb read word. on this? <laughs> You're so crummy. Uh, that one <laughs> was... the last part. <laughs> <laughs> Crumbelina. <laughs> the thing is you make... These are overnight bulk proofing. And overnight really depends on the temperature of your kitchen. Mm. So just to say I'm letting this proof overnight, that's a long... I'm with a lot of variables. If it's like really humid, for. is it going to get too much going? You'll get a lot more little sours in there. A little oh, soury, soury taste. That's what it makes. Is it the longer it proofs, the more sour it gets? Technically, the longer it proofs in the fridge, the sourer it gets. It proofs in the fridge? The cinnamon rolls proofed on the counter, though. But I proofed it for extra long because I went to bed early. <laughs> Some of those were you growing. <laughs> yeah, that what is does proofing mean? It grows? Yeah, that means you have baby your, bacteria. Your born? bacteria are farting. That's what makes it grow. Mm. Sourdough is wild, man. And then you have a big old dodo. Okay. Do you pop it? Sometimes they act, tell you to punch it. <laughs> you punch it? <laughs> yeah. That back here is like, what to do To let the farts out. And then you can fold it. But most of the time when you go to knead it, it rolls out the little fartles. Wow. This Fartles. sourdough. Is it, do you see that and be like, that's my child? I see it and I'm very uncomfortable when I. <laughs> that's my child. There's so many holes in it. Like when yeah, you I've empty it out. Maybe a tryptocholomania. Yeah. That's going to kill you, man. Yeah. It's going to get you. Yeah, it's crazy looking. But then in the morning, it's all dead and sad. Like there's no food for it to eat. So it's deflated. And then you feed it. And then you feed it. And it takes about eight hours. And he grows all day. All day. Then you punch him. <laughs> well, then you. Then make- you knead him with your fingers. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know. The thing is wild. Creepy. Creepy. It is very creepy to look at. And to know that it's growing, like, while I'm not there. <laughs> good bacteria, man. But they say it calms your stomach. So if you win an excuse to have cinnamon buns for breakfast. You know, like, if you make traditional um, chocolate chip cookies, you eat the batter and it's delicious. I cannot bring myself to eat oh, batter gotta, with that. There's no there. way I could do it. And knowing that it's farting, no. Yeah, a live bacteria. It's cookies though, are delectable. My dad got a my dad got a ticket. He came over and he got a ticket on his way. <laughs> but he was so nice to the police officer that they became buddies and he gave him a lesser ticket. I am the nicest person when I get pulled over. They ain't cut me no bikes. I don't get pulled over, man. I'm surprised because that's probably because you're riding most of the time on the shoulder. The yeah, other day, buddy. Corey was in front of me you and know I what? merged my over. My car does. Boops, kicks up when a rock. You need to 
Get into your lane. We know. We're powering through that thing. boop. Uh, 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 <laughs> Corey, open your eyes and drive uh, your car. <laughs> the other day, Corey got a rental. I had to go like pick up in it. If you think, if you think my car seat is laid back a lot, Corey was basically. It laid, looks like it was like chair, a it bed. looks like a chair is driving. No, it doesn't. There'd be a chair. You <laughs> can't no see head. the back. It just, <laughs> it just looks like two uh, hands coming from the floorboards. <laughs> I even said, "How can you see?" Of course, I don't. <laughs> so, back so much from bending over the cookies, I had to bend it the uh, other way. That is so wild. Even I was like, "I'd love to be this cool." But I got to see some. <laughs> Let's go to our sponsors. I'm going to lead with Eddie. The okay, this is kind of fun. Amy moderates a lot of these groups and she is in the comment section of a comment section of a comment section, making sure you ain't breaking no rules, which makes it for a very safe group, but it is a taxing job. It, it is. is something I do not You're like doing. You're seeing people on their wor- worst vent sessions. Then being told don't vent, then guess you'll never guess where they take the vent to. The person who said, Hey, listen, thank you so much. Not this group. This group is marketing. This group is not yelling. It's yeah. no client bashing. And then they, it's instead of client bashing, they admin bash. It's like, Unfortunately, like SEM is such a happy place, but there is an underbelly. <laughs> there's an underbelly to everything. Yeah. There's an underbelly to your community group, which we found this weekend. Yes, and there's yes, an underbelly. So Amy is like, well, I raised five boys. What's 46,000 other people? <laughs> Add them to my list. So it is a thankless job. It is a job yeah. where you're not, people aren't saying, thank you so much for talking me off that ledge and blocking and locking my thread. I really appreciate <laughs> it. It really helped me learn. <laughs> They're saying like, I deserved it. And then you have to wait for the blowback and the DMs and angry people. And I'm leaving your stupid group or whatever, people right? People laugh they, reacting at you to be rude. Yeah. And Amy's like, I don't know if raising five boys gives you the will of steel because she's to. like, it is what it is, man. The rules are the rules. <laughs> so on April 1st, Amy's like, hey, I'm so sorry. I got to step back. You know, my kids are a lot. And I and, know and Corey and I, I immediately called Corey. And I was and like, I we said, got a oh major my, problem. Oh, my God. Like, you know, I didn't even open the message. I didn't want to realize there was a panic. Like, I just read the preview. Yeah. I could only read, like, the chunky preview. You can't read the whole thing. But uh-huh. I was like, we got a, we got an issue. She's stepping back. Corey's like, what did we got to do? <sighs> Friday. Friday. <laughs> ship's going down. We're shutting down our group. So then, like, I called Corey. And Corey's like, so I write, I say, Amy, thank you so much for your help. Obviously, you've been doing a phenomenal job. <laughs> and then we – Too good at that. We're on it. <laughs> And then she's like, oh, well, April Fool's. My husband didn't think you'd fall for that. And I said, not only did we fall for it, we had an emergency meeting. <laughs> and I just didn't check your message because <laughs> I know what you were doing. You're never allowed to leave or play that joke again. <laughs> so Corey's like, hey, you know what? Let's thank this woman for doing what clearly was so needed that the thought that she wouldn't do it created mass panic. Mass panic. Like, literally, I'm planning my life. I was walking in the grocery store. And I'm planning <laughs> okay, my guess- life like – if I wake up an hour or two earlier, <laughs> I can I can go through things that happen in the middle of the night. You know what's so funny? And I don't know. Corey goes to bed at like 2 p.m. I don't know. You're gone real early. And then I go and I go to bed at like 2 a.m. And then I wake up at 2 p.m. And then Corey. But Amy's awake for both of us. She's You're talking to her in the morning. She's talking to me in the afternoon. My husband's police department has four shifts and they all overlap. And that's what I feel like we have. Like Amy's the shift Amy's that covers. Amy's the him. shift, midday shift. Yeah. Night shift, morning shift. He was a night shift too. I'm like, hey, do you see this? Do you want to <laughs> what do you think we should do? <laughs> it seems like a you on here. <laughs> um, so Corey's like, it'd be so funny if we if we just uh, turn her into a cookie cutter and take the cookie cutter and turn it into an Eddie print and then tell her we're going to send you an Eddie because she's been doing this for years. Uh, and Eddie is the, the sponsor that I'm trying to talk about here. Uh-huh. It's a direct-to-food printer. So we print Amy – Took a profile picture and cropped and photoshopped everything and did the thank you. And we turned it into a cookie cutter using the bamboo. And then Corey took the Eddie that she has and she printed Amy on it. And then we posted it in the group. And Amy was like, oh, my goodness. But the funniest thing was Amy's like, FedEx doesn't deliver to my house. Like, it, it has a huge problem with my house. And For I was like, everyone who is following the story who thinks we just got Amy a cookie with her face on it, we, we That's all we did. And we, <laughs> we FedExed her a cookie of herself and said, eat this. Thank you for your service. <laughs> Sorry, Enjoy, don't need to we do that. We sent her an Eddie and we surprised her by posting it in the group. But she's like, hey, what did they ship it? I was like, well, Eddie shipped it so fast. Like, I placed the order when the credit card company locked everything down because it was like, Corey's getting married again to a guy named Eddie. <laughs> no, no, no. I said, let it go through. Then she was like, who did they ship it through? And I was like, oh, it's FedEx, Fed Eddie. <laughs> and she was like, oh, FedEx has such an issue with my house. I don't know why. And I said, here's the tracking information. Yesterday, he's, he, I get the, your package has been delivered. And immediately, Amy's like, yeah, it's not at my house. They <gasps> delivered it somewhere else. She's like, I can barely see the house it's delivered to, but it's not mine. So I think, I'm not, but she posted a story about it. She drove around her neighborhood until she found the box. Then rescues him, 
from a porch that they didn't go to, and then she got him. That's hilarious. Yeah, I had a screenshot. This was like, oh my goodness, you got him. She's like, yeah, I had to find him. I had to locate Edward and bring him on home. Eddie has been rescued. <laughs> Eddie is a direct-to-food printer. I actually have an order that I need to use him for this week. What is it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for these 10-year corporate people are having a party and they want their faces on the cookies, so. Yeah, the whole company is going to eat the faces of the owners. Which is <laughs> insane. So I'm actually going to be using Eddie. Eddie works great on what I use, which is royal icing cookies. Um, it prints right on there. It looks just like a printer. Are you piping any details on this? No. Nope. This is also this is also the company of three branding. This is also the company's rebranding party. Yeah. So you can see where Eddie kind of fits really well in it. I know. And they requested Eddie cookies. They did not request any in piping on there. So that is easy. Weren't you money. making a piped Eddie combo for your community group? Yes. So the great <laughs> thing about Eddie, that <laughs> the great thing about Eddie is you can do piping with it. So this past weekend, I used him on a safari to you can't wild pipe order. with Eddie. You can pipe on top of an Eddie print to give yeah. a little bit more diversity. Eddie. So my <laughs> my background was a kind of uh, jungle theme, okay. and then I put a outline of a zebra and then painted it gold. Oh. So it worked great. I didn't have to bust out my airbrush machine. Nice. I think you would have anyways. I don't think no, I, I see you. <laughs> I'm mean, like, oh, so sorry. We don't, we don't have to offer that here. <laughs> Single dimension. Um, now go on to – that's Eddie. If you want to check out Eddie, go to Eddie Printer Users Group on Facebook. Really great group there. A lot of troubleshooting. They let they you. Were. They let you complain there. So if you go to that group, what you're going to see is a lot of – you're going to see a lot of people complaining because the squeaky wheel – I always see on Reddit, people are like, are, is anyone ever happy in their marriage? Everyone always complains about their marriage here. And everyone's like, people who are happy don't you're need in, help. You're in our failed marriage. <laughs> <laughs> people who are happy don't need help and don't make posts. Much like our concept today, people don't leave reviews when they're happy. Yeah. They leave reviews, when bad reviews not. when they're mad. Uh, so don't let that group kind of turn you off. The machine is amazing. The people who have made a ton with him are so busy making money and rolling around in it yeah. that they don't post. Lerve him. Lerve him. So I will be using that this week next if if you did not have an eddie i would not be doing it no no if you okay i didn't even finish about it would not be big (laughs) if you didn't have an eddie would you buy one now that i've gotten confident with him yes okay there is a little bit of a learning curve that you have to overcome getting him out of the box testing him out Mm -hmm. seeing how he works with your specific recipes Mm -hmm. but i honestly think he's absolutely fantastic okay great um, next up, but not least, is Royal Batch. It's a meringue powder I use in addition to my Eddie Prince. It is a fantastic meringue powder. If you're finding – someone messaged me and was like, I was trying to write on the top of my cookies with an edible marker. It keeps poking through. So I said, what is your meringue powder? And then it, once you named I said, that's your issue. You need to change your meringue powder. It's so nice to be able to write on cookies and have that additional – it's easier to instead of making black icing to do a smiley face with an edible marker and That's not have your little through. pencil tip tip. Yeah. Easy breezy, right? Easy breezy I didn't breezy. have to make a whole nother icing color mm-hmm. or wait for it to crust over. So Royal Batch is great. Um as far as the ones that I've used, it is my favorite. I've been using it exclusively for a few years now. It comes with ingredients already in there, which is white food coloring, so it whips up bright white. You don't have to add that. Vanilla extract, so it has a great taste right out of the bag. And then corn syrup, which gives it a softer bite. If you're doing things like heavy florals, I will say add a little bit more corn syrup to it. But it honestly just... Someone said... I had a customer that emailed me. (laughs) She said, not only do your cookies look good, they actually taste good. And I have to give that to Royal What a uh, covert stab at somebody else out there. <laughs> Not only do yours look good, they don't taste like trash. Yeah, like that lady was, was definitely downing her previously. <laughs> People are wild. They, it, I never. Uh, cease to be absolutely shocked by what people are willing to say to other people. <laughs> the internet uh, has made it too easy with a keyboard and talk to text. Yeah, say it to my face. Say it to my face. Yeah. I'll back. Yeah, the problem is you wouldn't say it to my no, face. No, because that would be very oh, wow. rude. Do you have a 20 terrorist? Yeah, I think I do. I got this air purifier last year. That and I then I didn't want to tell you guys that I got it for Phoebe, the cat that used to like the podcast, and then Phoebe passed away. The literal next week. Mm-hmm. So then I was like, well, this is kind it's of an air purifier. I recommend it to you, right? Yes. I was like, it's kind of a waste. There's no animal hair anymore. Okay, but I let the thing run. I turn it on. Yeah, I don't like hurt. the sound of him. I only turn him on when I leave the room. Shh. Like like that forever. 
I'm not a white noise girly. Which I makes quiet. makes not one sound. I mean, the, the sound of air. No, it doesn't make sound at all. Yeah, I almost have to you... put my ear in. I'm like, really? Oh, it's still this blowing. thing is making oh, a lot of noise. Well, as soon as it's. I also, blowing. I'm also the type of person who's like, if you have an option for a low blow or high, let's go all the way to the top. I want you to do your bestest okay, all the well, time on high blow on a Dyson. I'm like, let's get the most suction. That's why would I want eco mode? Uh 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 uh. I want high powered suction mode. I have mine at the one in the middle where you can't hear. I wanted mine to work, so I turned it all the way up. <laughs> so anyways, for a couple months I checked it because it was like you need to change a filter. Yeah. So I looked at the filter. I'm like, there's nothing on this thing. Then I haven't checked it forever, right? Because I'm like, well, you're doing your thing. Yeah. I'm doing my thing. But uh, Ruthanna had some construction done in the house. I opened that thing. It is so full of whatever that little dust that you – Huh? White drywall dust? No. You know, like when you vacuum something, it's all gray. Whatever that. Oh, and yeah. And I know people are like, those are your dead skin cells. Yeah, whatever. It's disgusting. But the thing is completely. It's I had a, gray? Yeah. I'll show you when we go upstairs and you can hear them blowing. <laughs> I have so many air purifiers in my house. Do they work? Yeah. Opening it, I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. So I'm thinking people who don't have air purifiers, maybe you should check them out. And this one on Amazon was 100 bucks, which is not cheap. No. But like, whoa, after seeing that result, if yeah. that's going into my eyeballs, no wonder why my eyes I itch. I have had an air purifier. I hate dust in general but dust that d- drops on a cookie is it's it's always irksome. a business risk yeah so now i have a air purifier it's technically for a didn't you get the dyson air level. purifier yeah but it's also a fan and a heater all in one do you not use that i only use that during the winter huh. need to be warm so you use this one that you recommended to me yeah I, and it's in the tiniest room, but it's for a whole level of the house. So I'm like, there will be oh. no dust in this. And I will say, it has cut down on any dust that could have been coming from that room. Also, a great tip is change your filters to your home school. I know. I've been on a dust dust, dust kick. I'm trying to kick the dust. I like that. Like really trying to eliminate dust. So vacuuming often, having a lot yeah. of air purifiers, yeah. making sure my filters are up to date. Yeah. I mean, if they're like, uh, if people feel like they're very congested. Yeah. They're like running a fan toward your face all night, just throwing that dust yeah. into your sinuses. So Plus, yeah, I've been running this thing for a year. Pets are dirty. That's, pets are dirty. Yeah. I don't even have pets, and this thing was like working overtime. It's so funny. The thing reads the air quality, right? It's always been green. Like it's always like great air yeah. quality. But when they were doing that construction, it turned red. Oh. And it was like there's something in the air. Did and you I was said like, you didn't want to. You told me I wouldn't buy the app. I did buy the one that talks to an app, which is $130, and I never use the app. But it would allow me to turn it on and off from my phone. Oh. So I took Heather's advice. The one that I got goes on sale often. It's just the dumber version of Heather's. It doesn't have an app, but it could be as low as $89. So I wouldn't say get it. Yeah. I would say skip out on the app. I bought the app. Never. I mean, every time I get a new phone, I have to sync it up. And I'm like, well, I never use this thing. <laughs> I could press the button. Yeah, I don't know. I really do like air purifiers. I, I say like I was working. I was not convinced until you told me. Tried it, uh-huh. and after I saw what the fill, I got the filters this morning from Amazon. The replacement. Yeah. After I saw that, I think I'm uh, I'm gonna do it for the rest of my life. I have two air purifiers in the kitchen because again, I hate dust, and dust is floating. Yeah, and I hate it around anything I bake. Yeah, and it is such a risky business to have. It is. It is dust around what you're making. Dust is everywhere. It's everywhere. So I want to eliminate it as much as I can. Yeah. And the side effect of being able to breathe easy. Yeah. yeah. They yeah. say it helps with your, like, better sleep as well. Yeah, I put one in my room. I actually have two in my room. How many do you have? I have so many. Why? <laughs> They're everywhere. Is that dust in your house? It's not even that big. <laughs> not anymore. Okay, what's your twin dress? What is my twin dress? Let me think of what you've done this week. Nothing. Just my sourdough cinnamon rolls. That was good. That was testing it out. Corey got in a sourdough... Cast off cookies? Is that what's called? Sourdough. Discard. Discard. Cast Discard. off sounds a little Sourdough bit better. Sourdough disgusting byproduct cookies. <laughs> <laughs> and I said pretty good. They're, they're actually very good. They are not like a to- like a typical chocolate chip cookie where it's dense and chewy. It's light and airy. It's light and airy. I'll say it is the concept of an oatmeal cookie without oatmeal yeah. that's gross. Like and It's like everything you'd want from an oatmeal cookie without the oatmeal. It almost tastes a little bit lighter. Yeah. You know, because it's so bready. Very like. bready. Sorry. Making so sorry. It's right here at the end. You're but someone apart. did post in the sourdough group that I'm in about a chewy version, like a more normal version of a sourdough. Oh, I'd love to try I would. I know I saved it. I, I think I'll have Let's to say try. the cinnamon bun's phenomenal. Cinnamon buns were easier than I thought. It's an overnight bulk, so you make it late at night. Did you send me – Corey's adding a sourdough class to the cookie college. Did you send me that the, information, the videos? Is everything good I to go? I did. Mm-hmm. 
I'm 100%. You're 100%. not going to have to message you saying, has this been shared with me? I Why can't I more, find but it? The problem is it's an intro class and I don't want to get too technical. We just need to get the foundations okay. down. So it's really going to teach you how to establish your starter, how to feed your starter. And then there's a few recipes in there that are tried and true. So we skipped over the cookie college for the digital downloads. This, for the digital downloads. So the digital downloads $10 a month. It's included in the college. We can buy it itself. This year, each month, it's a different type of digital asset. Yeah. So this month, I wanted to create Munbin printer templates, Munbin sticker templates, right? Here's my, here's my thing. When you design any paper printed product, right, we're so conditioned per Microsoft Word to have bleed edges yeah. because your printer will not, if you put it to the edge of your paper, your printer is just going to cut it off. Yeah. What the, and then since this is because I set up my Munbin and ran through all these, what the Munbin does is it takes the entire print thing, it creates its own bleed lines just for the fact of the printer, but it doesn't necessarily cut off your print. That's nice. So these templates, I'm building them out. I'm putting everything to the exact edge. There are no bleed lines in the template file. I know it's a little counterintuitive. I'm rediscovering the Munbin. And then for you people who complain about Munbin, you can change the centering of a print through your- They're just going to do a little Benny class in the main. Really? That's what you said on the... I don't like to be held to what I say. I like people to forget. (laughs) So what, that was your interest, your twin interest? Was that cinnamon cinnamon rolls worked out. My one question is if you are a cinnamon roll maker. Here's my question. Sourdough cinnamon roll maker? Any, this goes for anybody who makes any cinnamon roll. The center part where it's the butter, cinnamon, and sugar mix was not very much spreadable. Okay. Like when it got the sugar in there, it became more of like it wanted to stay clumped. Oh. But it, I feel like it needs to be spreadable. But the recipe definitely said only just like where it's room temperature butter, not melted, not oh. warmed or anything. If it was warmer, it would be easier to spread. But I was following the recipe. So like I don't like where there's huge clumps where you have right. a binary. Oh, that was That's so much a lot cinnamon of in there. Oh, yeah, yeah. So is there a tip? Like should I maybe like warm it just a tinge? If you want to text in your tip, my cinnamon bond people. It is five seven one five five six five six bow 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 You are appreciated. You have been seen, heard, heard, and understood. And understood. We will catch you on the flip side next Tuesday. Bye.